Ideal mesmo para o mundo atual seria fazer o ensino médio junto com o curso técnico, certo? É no SENAC que o aluno tem autonomia de verdade, formação cidadã, foco na diversidade, preparação para o Enem, material didático sem taxas e muito mais. Na real, tem tudo o que você precisa para se sentir preparado para a vida. Seja para entrar no mundo do trabalho ou te ajudar a decidir o que fazer na faculdade. Quer saber? SENAC. Vem comigo. Acesse sp.senac.br barra ensino traço médio traço técnico. Sair da escola já com uma formação profissional no currículo parece bom demais para ser verdade, né? Pois é. No ensino técnico do SENAC, isso é possível. É ensino médio junto com formação técnica, que acontece durante os três anos. Lá, eles usam a metodologia para projetos, desenvolvendo competências como resolução de problemas, pensamento crítico e colaboração, além de valores éticos e sustentáveis. Quer saber? SENAC. Acesse sp.senac.br barra ensino médio e saiba mais. Hello, fellow gamers, and welcome to the Video Gamers Podcast. On this episode of This Week in... Ah, who am I kidding? It's time for the Game of the Year Awards! <laughs> yeah! Our very own special episode where we crown the best and worst games of the year. But first, some introductions are in order. I am your host, Josh, and joining me... He's the recipient of our very own Smoke Show Award. As long as you like the handsome, physically fit, athletic type, it's Ryan. I thought for sure you were going to say Paul, <laughs> but it is good to be back. It is good to be here, and uh, I am excited. Wait, what? Well, you just spoiled it, Ryan. <laughs> uh, and joining us, he's like that old, beloved Nintendo cartridge that just doesn't want to work. And tell you blow on it. Mm -hmm. It's Paul! <laughs> I knew exactly where that intro was going as soon as you started. There you go. You know? Sometimes that's all it takes. A little smack on, on, on the bottom, blow on it, gets back to working. There you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Family, family, show. family friendly family show. I'm talking about oh, NES cartridges. Been. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> guys, it's good to be back. It's, uh, it's, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Here in Phoenix, these are like the only three weeks of nice weather. I think our high today was like 72. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to give out some game awards. It is good to have you back, Paul. It, it, it hasn't been that long, but it also feels like it's been an eternity. I know. Absolutely love the love that you have been getting from the community. We're still getting comments, reviews, and stuff like that that mention Paul. So we, we are... Super pumped to have you for this episode. And you know what? You're a man of your word, Paul. You said, hey, I will mm -hmm. be back when you guys do the end of the year episode. And here you are. And we could. I, can you guys tell I'm excited? <laughs> yeah. When I said I was stepping down, it was literally in the same sentence that I told you guys. I'm going to have to quit the pod. I'm really sorry. But I absolutely want to be back for end of year awards. So I knew I was going to be back for this one. Yeah, we we love these awards. This is one of our favorite episodes of the year. We have done it since the inception of this podcast, I believe. Paul, you're more of the historian, too. I don't remember if we did it like maybe year one, but I'm pretty sure we've done this like every year. I think we and missed in 2020, but 2021 is when we started. Okay, well, that's that's fair. And we've kept it going ever since. Um, part of the fun of this is, you know, there's been the Game Awards announced all their nominees and stuff like that. It caused some controversy and people said, oh, I don't know about some of these games and Shadow of the Erd Tree shouldn't qualify because it's a DLC. And, you know, there was a lot of talk around that stuff. But man, we cover a lot of games. We are gamers. We play a lot of games. And we also, the three of us, have very different game opinions And so it makes it, it, it kind of, I feel like it gives people like a broader perspective of like what resonates with people, maybe something that people forgot about. Um, and then as we do, we just like to be stupid. We're going to give out our smoke show award. We've got a dog turd award, you know, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be a really good episode. So um, you guys ready to get into it? Oh, I'm ready. Can I bring up one thing before we start oh. the awards? 
Oh, absolutely. Can I just point out one thing about the length of some of your guys' episodes without oh, me? They're, oh, they're, come oh, on. 45 minute this week in gaming episodes? <laughs> It's, it's, guys paul we have nobody to wrangle us we in need a man. babysitter like, all, ryan and i are both talkers every it's, time i hosted josh is like guys we gotta cut these episodes they gotta be shorter and then here i leave and i'm like well that'll be no problem you just cut at least like 30 percent of the talking and you know i i listened to the whole episode from last thursday full i think 47 minutes got gotta love it it's we have no supervision anymore, Paul. We, really, we blame you. Uh, that's for fair. This. So. We're, we're lucky if I can even get Josh to do ad breaks. We'll be like thirty yeah. minutes in, and I'm like, oh crap, ad break. I don't. I don't know if anybody, and I'm sure the listeners don't mind this, but I don't know if anybody's noticed. But like, we used to take two ad breaks during an hour long episode. <laughs> We, we haven't done that in like a month because I keep forgetting to take the second one. <laughs> oh man! Just a little bit of foreshadowing here. Josh did forget to take the second ad break. I'm going to put one in anyway. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, so Paul, it's your fault. Um, and you know what? This episode guaranteed to be on point as far as the time goes. It's, we're, we're keeping this to an hour. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. You're still we'll, hosting, so. Oh, man. We'll see. I do have a son who is in a string band concert in uh, one hour and 40 minutes. So we are on a little bit of a timer. Oh, boy. All right. No pressure then. All right, boys. Let's get into our Game Awards. You know what? It, it's Man, this has been a crazy year. Um, let's start off. Let's just... <laughs> Let's, let's just do this one, man. I hinted at it at the top of the show during the intro. One of our favorite awards that we have always given out and is uh, it's just it's stupid, but it's fun. Boys, we're, we're starting with the Smoke Show Award. <laughs> oh, now we're All talking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys struggle with this one? I nope. felt like nope. Really? Nope. Okay. Nope. This was super easy. <laughs> I can't wait to hear. I have absolutely no idea where you guys are going to go with this. Uh, Smoke Show Award being the hottest video game character in 2024. This one was a no-brainer for me. I'm just going to say it, man. It's Eve from Stellar Blade. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Listen, listen. Anytime <laughs> Paul's like nodding his head now. He's like, oh, okay. I see where you're going. Anytime you have a character's outfits that cause controversy in a video game, you know there's a Smoke Show Award coming for that character, man. You, Plain you, and simple. You were also a big 2B fan in uh, Near Automata as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well. Let's back it up, Paul. The, the word was is very harsh. <laughs> I am a big 2B fan. <laughs> you used to be and you still are. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one was easy for me. I didn't have to think about this one very much. Uh, I still really can't wait to play Stellar Blade because, man, that gameplay just looks incredible. Mm, the gameplay, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We understand. <laughs> well, I guess we'll save the best for last, and I'll go next. <laughs> so this one may may just be a little bit of recency bias. I'm going with the game Marvel Rivals, oh. and the character oh, is going to be... It's Hella. Tell me it's Hella. It is not Hella. What? No, 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 Have no. Have you seen Hella? Uh, Hella's good. Hella's okay. good. They got a lot of quality characters in that game, but I'm going to go with Black Widow. Okay, that's a that's not bad either. Happy birthday, because everybody's getting some cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was making this joke at work the other day because I was talking about how like everybody has cake now, and like you know I've been playing Overwatch. They released Juno, who's you know she's a recently released cake, and, and, and it's like everybody. <laughs> It's just these people do nothing but squats all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, even talking yeah, a little bit about the history of this award, uh, it, this came about because I made a joke about Lost Ark that every character yes. in that game was a smoke show. And yeah, there are there's definitely been a trend lately. You don't you're not seeing very many normal looking people anymore. I I am no. behind it. I am ready for this trend. Oh, <laughs> Emphasis on the behind. Ryan. Yeah. What? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, let's see. Paul struggled with this one, so now I'm really curious. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, is 
Paul's Rust character is that, is that Paul's that Rust available? character is not eligible <laughs> this year. Okay, so by the way, I did just bring up a picture of Black Widow, and she's got red hair in Marvel yeah. Rivals. Oh yeah. Well, you mm-hmm. should have known, Josh. There's no way he would have picked Hella. I know. When Ryan there's a redhead. Redheads. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when I was looking at this award, I did not see any real obvious winners, and I'm going back a bit with this. This is going back to a game that I think released back in March. I don't even think you guys are going to remember this character. But I'm going to say Wilhelmina from Dragon's Dogma 2. And in case you don't remember, I just pasted a picture in Discord. Oh, all right. Okay. I don't remember anybody in Dragon's Dogma 2. So uh... Uh, Ryan goes for the redheads. I go for the darker hair. This This is is a little more up. She's like Yennefer, man. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that. She looks like Yennefer for sure. Yep. Darker hair, paler skin. That's much more my speed. Game version, not the TV show version. <laughs> yes. Yeah, game version, untouchable. So, all right. So, uh, that's there's those are some good winners, man. I don't know that Dragon's right. Dogma Two is going to win too many awards here, but at least that's one. <laughs> it's it's got it, it. It deserves something. Sure. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's move on to you know this is the year uh, end of the year review, but one of the things that really gets us going is game reveals uh, that are coming up. And a lot of times, you know, it says, hey, this game's been announced and we get very excited, but it's, you know, it's it's not announced until 2025 or 2026. So one of the awards that we have is the most promising game reveal. So this is the game trailer, the game reveal, whatever you want to call it, that got you the most hyped or you felt like was the most promising reveal that we have seen this year so paul why don't you lead us off on this one all right one of you two might have this as the same answer my gut my initial reaction was gta 6 but that reveal was in december of last year so it's not eligible i am going with the altars for this one oh josh uh, (laughs) josh seemed a little surprised on that timeline i i went with the altars so we saw the first gameplay reveals it was all stuff that is 100% up my alley. I mean, I'm always looking for games that do something a little bit different. Like Marvel Rivals, I, I played one match. I'm sure it's a great game. I know I would love it if I hopped in with you guys, but it's a lot like Overwatch, right? Like it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. The altars to me looked like something that was custom made for what I love with video games. I loved the whole idea of having your own person cloned several times and having them all interact with each other, but making different decisions, getting back and looking at that timeline. I know that we all played the demo, and that for me is what really solidified it. The reveals looked amazing, and then once we actually got to play the demos, it's got a little bit of like satisfactory DNA as far as building your base, but then it's also got like Fallout Shelter style base management and a little bit of like RimWorld, the way all your clones interact. And that's one for me that I cannot wait to play. I, I was so bummed that it got pushed out of this year. Uh, but the altars for me was one of the most promising reveals. That's the innovation I'm looking for in in gaming. Well, it's 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 no secret that I have terrible time memory on this show. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was gonna say GTA six, which is why when Paul was like, Well that happened in December, I was like, Oh no, was that December? I could have sworn it was this year. I fact checked um, myself ahead of time. <laughs> oh, I, we should probably do that sometimes. <laughs> I'm glad he needs to do that because it's not like I had the same answer. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Um so I, I just, listen, to not <laughs> To not just copy Paul. I really am hyped for the altars. Like I think, and th- th- it's weird because that's not a game that I would normally like. And that game drew me in almost instantly. So I, I it, that tells me something in, in regards to that game here. I- I'm going to go with one. And I think this was actually revealed last year as well, but I didn't find <laughs> out about this reveal until this year. And so I'm going to bring it up anyway. That is John Carpenter's Toxic Commander. Oh, <laughs> um, we nice. should get more information soon. I know that they have a beta coming up, um, but this trailer that they released for this game looks like Hell Divers, but with zombie hordes and vehicles, and it's a first person game, and it looks incredible to me. I scoured the internet for any other information about Toxic Commando once I finally saw this trailer. 
And there's just nothing, man. They went like radio silent on this until finally I found a site that said, yeah, there is some closed beta stuff going on. Um, but you talk about a game that gets me really, really excited. Uh, you know, give me hell divers with friends with big armored vehicles and hordes of zombies. And it just sounds like an absolute blast to me. So Forgive me for the date that the trailer came <laughs> out, but I'm pivoting at the last second. And, but this game looks incredible to me, and I think it could wind up being fantastic if they ever show anything else about it. It's like that in Star Wars Eclipse. There's just like no info out there on those games. Yeah. You're yeah. like, more. Give me more. So, Ryan, did you pick GTA 6 as well? I'm not I the did. only one, I right? Did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so our brains work a little differently than most. Uh, as I said before we started recording when I was late, time is a man-made construct. <laughs> Wait, you were late to recording, right? No. What? No. 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 I was picking up my son from school, to be fair. But anyways, I'm going to go with one that uh, I may try to get into tonight after recording. I don't know. We may pay, play some rivals, but um, if not, it's, it's a game that I've been pretty high on i think i was a little higher than you guys for quite a while i know it has probably uh one of the best names paul's favorite video game name ever but i'm gonna go with indiana jones and the great circle is this the reviews have been fantastic dude I, everybody that i know that has tried this is just blown away so far i have yet to see somebody be like i tried it it's mid yeah uh, what yeah. were you gonna say it paul is this where I say that I actually think it looks pretty decent <laughs> in all the yeah. footage I've seen? I haven't played any of it, but I will say it looks so much better than I thought it was going to turn out. Paul was so upset about the name. The name is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the mediocre circle. <laughs> the mediocre circle. Um, I did see some gameplay footage where it, they synced it next to the actual film with the opening scene. And there was like a one for one. And it looked so awesome. So I'm pretty excited to dive into it. Yeah, I it makes me sad. I actually commented that today to somebody in our discord server. But I said I won't wind up playing this game. But everybody talking about it and seemingly loving it and saying that it feels like the movies of old. And you're just you're actually getting to play them and the soundtrack that goes with it and everything else. I was like, oh, you guys are giving me serious FOMO right now, man. So, all right, well, let's do one more and then we will take a, uh, a quick break. You know what? Looking into next year again, um, you know, we, we, we've kind of come to terms when games get delayed. I know personally I used to rage at that. Maybe it's Cyberpunk that got delayed like six different times that really did it to me. And then it released in a terrible state. And I went, ooh, maybe they should have delayed that even more. Um, but we do have an award for the saddest game delay <laughs> And this one is easy for me, um, but, you know, this is a game that got delayed to, you know, 2025, even 2026, maybe. But Ryan, let's start with you on this one. What game delay made you the saddest? Well, mine's going to be one that uh, Paul just mentioned. I don't know if I'm going to snake that from him, but I'm going to go with Alters. Yeah. I was just so hooked after that demo where it's this deep, dark gritty world that you're you're walking your path and you're setting up your uh power and you're mining for things and you're doing all this cool stuff to extend the life and basically survive i just thought it was such a cool effect on a game and it, and i was hooked into it hopefully it is for good reason and they're gonna polish it up it's gonna look awesome um and and if that's the case then i'm okay with it yeah, I think we're all okay with the delay if they're going to wrap a bow on everything, make exactly. it come out even better. Yeah. yeah, I did not put this for my saddest delay, although this would have been my runner up for this one. You know, you guys might remember earlier this year, we might have done an auction draft and half of the games that I bought for most anticipated 2024 all got pushed. So I'm going to go with one of those selections. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. Way too long of a title, but that's my pick. Can you believe now? Now this Josh never played Metal Gear Solid until just recently. Ryan, it has almost been ten full years since the Phantom Pain came out. Like I just to relive Metal Gear Solid Three, I'm cool with. Like I am just dying for any Metal Gear Solid content. 
I cannot wait to be eating poisonous frogs, crawling around in the swamps, hearing all the hysterical voice lines. Uh, I absolutely love games that blend stealth with action, and no one does it better than Metal Gear Solid. So getting to replay it, I just can't wait, and I'm so sad it got pushed. Talk about a smoke show. You ready to see some vamp? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's a good one. Yeah, man. This one... uh is is an all-timer for me i love this series obviously you guys all know that um i actually saw some footage the other day that i'd never seen before where kojima for the first metal gear solid was actually setting up uh uh, layouts in legos and so he could get the camera angles right for the game the way he wanted to design it so he's just one of those above and beyond developers um this game was like a masterpiece in this stealth action genre, and I'm so I'm so ready. I'm excited to play it for the first time. Like you yeah. guys are going back, <laughs> but like you guys have me hyped. It's so in re- good. Like it, it. Like I, I I don't even know what I'm to expect, man. At this point, like I, I sure I played Metal Gear Solid Five. Is it gonna be like that? Is it different? Is it kind of its own thing? It's being completely remade from the ground up, so it looks very current and modern. So I am very hyped for that one. I just have no idea what to expect. So the delay didn't really bother me because it's like I don't know what's coming. Like you don't know what you're missing if you don't know what you're missing, kind of thing. So, um, so for me, this one, <laughs> I was. I'm still insanely hyped for this game, but it, it's avowed. Yeah, I knew the you were going to say gets that. Me, the thing that gets me and why it's the saddest delay to me is the only reason that they delayed avowed is because they just said there's too many games coming out at yeah. the end of the year. <laughs> we could be playing avowed right now. <laughs> I know, man. You know, and, and, and then the worst part about it is so they moved it to February and then like three other games Moved right next to Avowed. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, probably very like smartly, like was right next to Avowed in its release date. And then they said, you know what? We're releasing a week earlier yeah. so that they can leapfrog Avowed's <laughs> release. And it's just like, this makes me sad, man. Like, it's the end of the year. Thankfully, I have Path of Exile 2 and Marvel Rivals that I'm playing, but like I'd be playing a vow right now if I could. So you talk about a game that makes you sad because it was delayed. Like the only reason they delayed it got just thrown in the garbage because all these other games that decided they wanted to release in February as well. Well, and mentioning earlier our most anticipated draft, a certain someone blew a quarter of his entire budget on a vowed. And that was me as well. So <laughs> yeah. 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 You got hit by the delay bug hard. Really so. did. All right, listen, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back with our personal favorite game of the year when we get back from this break. Enquanto você escuta seu podcast favorito, que tal dar uma olhada nos looks da Riachuelo para as festas de fim de ano? Brilhos, transparências, vestidos, conjuntos, temos tudo para todos os eventos. Aqui, toda festa começa com look. for this one boys this is our your personal favorite game of the year not the one that you think deserves the game of the year award not the you know the the best indie game or any of that stuff this is your gaming tastes it doesn't even have to be a game that actually released this year it's just what has been your personal favorite game that you have played in 2024 um i'll go first on this one this one is easy for me. It's Helldivers 2. There's no qualms about it. Helldivers 2, we were insanely hyped for. I, I mean, all of us were just completely enamored with all of the footage we saw for this game. 
it was one of those things where is it going to be as good as the trailers and the footage and the previews make it look? I honestly believe it was way better in person, like playing that game than anything actually made it look. I cannot think of another game that I have played this year that I enjoyed from just a sheer fun gameplay with friends standpoint than Helldivers 2. So for me, I'm giving it its dues. It is my personal favorite game of the year. Solid, solid pick. Uh, I, uh, coincidentally enough, have the same pick. <laughs> um, it was just it was just such a good game. It was one of those games that, you know, we're all, we're married, we have kids, we have lives, we have careers. It's one of those where you make time to play this game. You schedule out and set, hey, when are we getting on tonight? We are playing Helldivers, you know, we got to dispense liberty amongst the cosmos. So it's just one of those that that you think about all day, every day, and and you want to get that time in. And it was one of the best experiences I've had in online gaming specifically in a long time. And it was just, it was absolutely awesome. There's only been a handful of games that have been like that for our friend group where like everybody's playing it. We had it with PUBG. We had it with Overwatch. We had it with Valheim. And I think Helldivers 2 is the only one that's really been that way. Like so many yeah. people played and it was so much fun and so memorable like a lot of my favorite moments from this year are remembering our times in Helldivers for sure. Yeah. It's rare when a game brings out your extended friend group. You know, you've always got like your buddy, your two that you play games with, but it's like once it, when a game comes out and all of a sudden there's like eight people in a voice channel, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to have to break into groups on this. That's something special because that does not happen very often anymore. And it almost gives you that like nostalgia or like that reminiscing of playing, you know, for us, like Goldeneye back in the day or Perfect mm -hmm. Dark or the original Halos and stuff like that, where it was like there was something special about that, not only the game, but just the experience of playing that game with friends. And Helldivers 2, like, was it's honestly the only thing in recent memory. I mean, there's been some good ones like you just mentioned them, Paul, but it's like th there's something special about that experience, not just the game itself, but when it brings out enough people that want to play it together. Yes. It, it's hard to capture that, you know, and I don't I don't know what the magic formula is, but Helldivers 2 nailed that. They definitely did. And I want to say one other thing about Helldivers to Ryan. The mortar sentries were not worth it. <laughs> No, they, no were not, they were not worth it. All you have it. to do is just not run into the <laughs> no. middle of a clump no. of enemies. No, because one Helldiver's life is worth more than a thousand Terminids. Cannon fodder. All of you. Cannon Ryan, fodder. Ryan always acted like we wouldn't have killed those bugs if his mortars weren't there. It's like, we Ryan's wouldn't have killed them. was, I killed 500 yeah. bugs, man. And I'm like, yeah, and you killed three of us. And three of us is worth way more than 500 bugs. 100%. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Paul? What do you got? So for this one, I decided to go with Astrobot. And this is a game that is very much in contention for best game of the year. But when I am looking at the most fun, it was unquestionably either Astrobot or Helldivers 2. Now, I've talked about this in our Discord, but when I'm thinking best game of the year, I want a game that touches a little bit of everything. It's got story, it's got the gameplay, it's got the graphics, it's got a little bit of everything. And you don't really have story when you're looking at Helldivers 2 or Astrobot, but man, did those games just nail gameplay. A hundred percent. So for me, I'm generally thinking what game has the best gameplay for most favorite. And since you guys both went Helldivers, for me, it's like 1A and 1B, but I'll just go ahead and say Astrobot. It is the best platformer I have played in such a long time. The secrets that you get to uncover, the audio design, the use of the PS5 controller. There is so much you can gush about with Astrobot. It is so much better than it has business being. And I honestly think like moving forward, it very well could be better than the 3D Mario games at this point. Like I would not be shocked. Mario is really going to have to up the ante if they want to keep pace here with uh, with Sony's new favorite IP. I, I agree wholeheartedly, dude. It's like Astrobot kind of raised the bar. And I really wonder if Nintendo is going to respond with their Mario games because it's kind of like... I, and Nintendo doesn't innovate with their games very often. They just kind of went, hey, we know how to refresh it. We know how to make it a little bit more fun than the last game that we sold a gajillion copies of. 
But Astrobot really was something special. And I really hope, if nothing else, that it influences Nintendo to say, okay, we have to get a little bit more modern with Mario and we have to up the ante there. Bowser's Fury did innovate and do that, but it was so short. And I right, still, yeah, I, exactly. yeah, it was like three hours or maybe even two hours. So I, I'd really like to see them blow that concept out into a full fledged Mario game. And maybe that'll do it. I can't wait to find out. Yeah, that's where I was yeah. too, man. It was 1A, 1B. Um, it's absolutely amazing. But just kind of the online gameplay with friends is what usually trumps everything for me. All right, boys, let's make a complete 180. And stop talking about great games. And let's talk about a game that is just the stinkiest pile of dog dookie game that you could imagine. It's time for the Dog Turd Award. Excellent. So, I mean, this is not which game. You you might say which game disappointed you the most. But this is, again, just the worst. I stepped in it. Get it off my shoe. Gross. It just ruined my day. This is the award that we're giving out. Ryan, let's start with you on this one. I'm going to go with a game that I was hyped for. Uh, I loved the look. I loved the environment. I thought that the gameplay, everything was going to sync up and it was going to just be awesome. Probably a little more than I should have been hyped for this, but I'm going to go with Pacific Drive. I am so with you, brother. This is my what pick. A freaking turd, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, let's just go uh, spawn 50 things out of the trash can, and then uh, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to get out of my car. Oh, wait, oh, no, hold on. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't turn it off. Oh, I got to put it in gear. Oh, I got to open the door. Oh, it it just, it was, it was something that I expected so much of, and I wanted it to be so good, so bad, and it was just such, such a letdown. And talk about a freaking turd, dude. This was the turd of turds. Well, this, Josh is one of those guys. I want to hear Josh defend Pacific Drive. I, I, I'm not <laughs> defending Pacific Drive. I, I don't think it's a dog turd. I, I will say that. It had some serious like design flaw choices, like development choices, like making you redrive through every zone all over again. But I cannot think of a game that I know of that has hurt Ryan more <laughs> than Pacific <laughs> Drive has. Because it is always right there at the top of his mind where it's just like, what did they do to you, Ryan? <laughs> that and humanity. Oh, oh I love humanity. Pacific Drive, I, I think, Ryan, you and I just felt exactly the same. Did you ever find any part of that game interesting? Like at no, all? No, I didn't, no, I didn't me have either. a drive to explore, to go around no. and, and check out the world. It was just, I, I found myself more frustrated at playing the game than engaged. Well, and, and not only that, it was one of the worst uses of roguelike mechanics I've ever seen. Because normally, if you're playing something like Hades, you're getting like power-ups, and even though you're retreading old stuff, at least you're, 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 you're uh, building your actual character build along the way and you see yourself getting stronger and that's kind of fun and you can tinker with that and whatnot. But in Pacific drive, you're just driving through the same zones again and again and again. And it's just boring. It's not interesting. There's nothing to find off the beaten path. You just, it's just boring and lame and buggy. I, I found that game to have almost no redeeming qualities. I thought someone might bring up dragon age, the fail guard, um, Dragon Age is like completely neutered to me. It was just so meh that I I almost can't give it the dog turd award because I was expecting it to be pretty bad at the end. But man, Pacific Drive seemed like it could offer some fun, and it just failed in every single way to me. Is that your pick as well, Paul? Yes, it, it was immediately. I had to think for half a second. Yeah, yeah, really smart yeah. guy, okay. smart guy. I mean, I I, I was actually gonna <laughs> pick uh, Fail Guard, but. Uh, you know, I expected that to be bad with everything you guys have said about it and everything. So, um, yeah. Well, I'm picking Veilguard, boys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I mean, Pacific Drive was okay. Like I said, it it definitely was a disappointment overall. But, man, look, look I, I know we're, we're fresh off our Dragon Age Veilguard episode. And, you know, I, I think I ranked it somewhere in the fives or sixes. But it's like... You know how sometimes the longer you're away from something, you get to kind of stew on it a little bit. 
And it's like, you know, now I'm playing Path of Exile 2, which I think is fantastic. Marvel Rivals, which kind of came out of nowhere. It's just an Overwatch clone. But darn it, if we ain't having a lot of fun playing that game right now. And so it's like when you see these other games, you know, and it, it, it just kind of makes you realize like, Ryan, we just mentioned it when we did the Stalker 2 episode where it's like Stalker 2 doesn't hold your hand. They let you just discover the game by the natural discovery that happens while you're playing the game. And 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 so I'm giving Veilguard this award because it it's just so disappointing to me that it's like the longer I'm away from it, I look back and I just get like more and more upset by it. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure to be fair, if I jumped back in, I'd probably be like this game's fine. No. It's it's fine. No, you you know, it's not great, but it's not but no. <laughs> no. No, man, forget that. That game sucks, man. They ruined it. You know what? I keep all these stupid choices and 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 the combat is lame and the the storytelling sucks and the weird cartoony characters don't feel like anything that they don't even match when they're talking, when it's all serious. And I'm like, Oh, I'm watching this guy's cartoony face trying to tell me that the world is ending, you know? And it's just like the longer I'm away, the more that like the rage just builds. And and I just, ah, <laughs> why it was dragon age, man. And Paul, you're the biggest dragon age fan. And you're like, you're not even that upset. Cause you're like, ah, I didn't expect it, but it doesn't fix it. It doesn't change it, man. That game sucked. They ruined one of the best series of all time. I wish everyone could see the vein on Josh's forehead right now. Yeah, because... Oh, man. Dude, how do you mess up? This is like saying The Witcher 4 is going to come out and be an absolute hot disaster of a game. Yeah. Like, how do you screw that up, man? It's so hard. You have to almost actively try. See... That's, that's the problem. You seem more mad about it. I am just more sad. Like there is nothing worse than losing one of your favorite franchises. It's it's awful. There's there's only so many good RPG series that are out there and Dragon Age for me was right at the top of the list and like I, I don't even know if they're going to make any more Dragon Ages but at this point would you even buy it if it looks no. similar to Veilguard? Not a chance. Nope. Not no. no. Unless that studio got bought out by other people, the IP sold to a competent studio or something. Uh, never again. Yeah. Never. Yeah, I was like uh, I was telling Josh earlier trying to figure out what a comparison would be where what it would mean for me where uh you know what they would do to to that type of series and and for Metal Gear, if they were to do that to Metal Gear, make it look like a and, Nintendo and, game. Yeah, yeah, cartoon it like <laughs> f- f- Fortnite effect. Um, I would just, I would be the same. I would just be more sad and distraught than anything. Uh, you know, I'd probably be a little mad too, let's be honest. But yeah, it's just, I, I get it. I get why you're sad. Yep. Yeah. No, Paul's the guy that steps in dog poop and goes, oh man. Yeah. I'm the guy that steps in dog poop and it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Who let their dog poop right here? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm glad. You know, I feel better, guys. I'm glad I got that out. Man. I've been saving that up for this this category in particular. And uh, yeah, feeling, feeling kind of good now. Very nice. <laughs> All right, let's get into best. You know, we're, we're we're going back to the good stuff, boys. Best indie game or under the radar? Now, now this has been a weird year for indie games, so this could also be a game that you feel like is flying under the radar and not enough people know about. Um, so, Paul, let's start with you on this one, mm. and I I kind of have a feeling I know what this one is for you. I think you know for sure. So, first of all, all apologies to Bellatro. It's a great game. I bought it. I played it. It is very fun. It is nowhere near the top of the list for me when you have Animal... Oh, my goodness. Animal Well sitting right there. Animal Well is by far the best indie game that I played this year. It's one of those games that I I talked a lot about on the show. And at first glance, it doesn't seem like it has all that much to offer. It's got some minor platforming elements. It's a little bit like a Metroidvania. But the longer you play it, the deeper and deeper and deeper it gets and the more secrets you uncover. It is so incredibly clever in how they made that game and all the items you use. Like, when's the last time you fired up a game and your only items are like a slinky, a bubble wand, uh, a yo-yo, and like those are your only items? And yet this game finds such clever ways to build all of those together into puzzles. Like, okay, I got to drop 
the slinky on this side of this hill at this time. Then I got to run here, hit this with my yo-yo and like time all of these things out. It is such a clever game. It's almost too clever for its own good that I think a lot of people jumped in, played a little bit, maybe even thought they beat the game and finished it and did not realize how much more there is to do in Animal Well. This to me, landslide victory. It's it's Animal Well, no doubt. I've seen this. I've seen this a lot, like from a lot of people in a lot of places. And I think the only thing that's holding this game back from really being in like the game of the year contention, like mainstream is just not enough people played it. You know? Very well could so be. I think that's, yeah. I, I mean, if you look at the, the like reviews for animal well, and some of the people that have played it and talked about it, it's there's like magic there. And it's weird because I, I know I say this all the time and like Celeste proved me wrong on this too, but like the graphics put me off a little bit. Sure. You I know, get it. And I hate that because it's like, I don't, I know that there's an incredible game there under the surface, but sometimes I just kind of look at it and I kind of go like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a hurdle. It's an unnecessary hurdle in order yeah. to get into the game. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. All right, Ryan, what about you? Best indie or under the radar game you've played this year? So I'm not the biggest indie guy in the world. Um, if it was just what we played this year, I would be going lethal company. Cause that's still just an all timer for me as far as indie games go. It's so much fun. Um, but what we're looking at is for this year, and I'm going to go with a game that is probably on Josh's list as well. I'm going to go with Dave the Diver. Mm. It's just so much fun. Didn't that come out last year? It did come out last that year. Was last I know year, because buddy. that's the one thing I checked oh, right before yeah. the episode. Yeah! Because I'm not the only dummy. Yes! Well, <laughs> I think Josh gave this award to Dave the Diver last year. I might be wrong on I, that. Th- no, look, just so that Ryan doesn't feel too embarrassed by this, I legitimately had this on my list <laughs> I figured five you minutes would. before we started oh. recording. And then I went, let me just double check. <laughs> it's the only thing I double checked. I should. I should have checked the GTA well. 6 trailer, but I didn't do that one either. Last year, Josh gave Dave the Diver the most surprising game award. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that one's All last right, Ryan, year. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll give you a minute or two to figure out if there's something else that you can think of. Dude, I, know it's on- I don't even know if I've even played another indie. All I've played Lethal Company. That's it. <laughs> So, all right, well, I'll just jump in here then. I will say, you know what? I, it's it's interesting to me because normally I play at least a few indie games every year. And this year, for some reason, I don't know if it's that we had so many mainstream releases that just, that really kept us busy. And so as I started looking through like the indie games, I kind of went... I haven't played any of these. And that's not normal because normally, like I said, I jump into a few at least. There was one that I jumped into. You guys, I didn't play this with either of you, but I did play this game with our good buddy Ace of Shame. And that is a game called Abiotic Factor. And I remember actually mentioning it to you two because we were having an absolute blast. And the thing with Abiotic Factor is it kind of, it's just another survival crafting game, right? And it's like, how many dozens of those have we played at this point? You know, I mean, you know, Satisfactory doesn't have a ton of survival elements, but crafting games. And then we had the Enshrouded that came out, uh, Abiotic Factor. I mean, these games, uh, what's the Nightingale that failed? Yeah. Remember, Paul, you mm-hmm. tried that one. We got real hyped Hated from the trailer, it. and then that thing was a colossal failure. So it's kind of like, I mean, there's a million of these. But I jumped into Abiotic Factor with Ace of Shame, and man, did we crack out on this game. And I can tell you that this game is an easy choice for me because it's still not fully released yet, but there is something there. It is like playing Half-Life as if you, if you're the person that was in the facility when all heck broke loose, you know, and it's like, now you're just stuck in there. I remember you guys playing this. I remember. Yeah, dude, we played, we played this a lot. Like we really got into it, man. And we beat all of the early access content. We made it as far as you could go in this game um, until they released some new content for it. But man, what an enjoyable game. And I I get it. There's going to be people that are saying, yeah, I've played a dozen of these. They're all the same. There is something different and something special about Abiotic Factor. I can't 
even really vocalize what it is, but it just stands out in such a good way. It was so much fun. The progression was great. The environment was great. Don't let the kind of graphics put you off on this because it does look kind of old school. It almost looks like Half-Life 1 would look, you know, Um, but man, what an enjoyable game. Dude, so I was just looking. Dave the Diver came out January 28th of 2023. So <laughs> yeah. I, wasn't I was like, close. that's why I, I laughed, right? Because off. I literally had it on. <laughs> I don't know what Samsonite. I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Paul and I were talking right before we recorded, too, about uh, how this year just seems so long. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I guess the years just melded together <laughs> yeah. for me. One yeah. thing we should probably mention about Best Indie, because I'm sure a lot of our listeners are shouting, why is no one talking about another Crab's Treasure? I know. I know. But that was I didn't play it. <laughs> I didn't play it either. Yeah. I that was I almost went with that and I almost went with Echo Point Nova, which is the uh, first person shooter on like uh Tony Hawk mix that we talked about that people were saying is an absolute blast, but I didn't play that one either. And it feel I felt really weird like mentioning a game that we haven't actually played. It's like, I know that probably deserves it, but we haven't played them. So it's like, how can I nominate that at the same time? So, all right, let's, uh, I'll tell you what. So that was best indie. Let's get into, let's, let's go, let's go back the other direction. I kind of like this pendulum swing that we're doing right (laughs) here. Okay. Most overrated game of the year. So this is a game that you felt like, Hey, you know what? Everybody else seemed to love this game or this game got really good reviews or maybe even just mediocre reviews, but you felt like it deserved way worse. So most overrated game of the year. I have an easy answer for this one. Um, I'll just, uh, no, actually I'll let you go first, Paul. Cause I just, I just gave my answer for abiotic <laughs> factor. So to me, this was so easy. It's a game that did not get great reviews. They were Sort of mid to slightly better than mid, but I think it is vastly overrated by Josh in particular, a little bit Ryan. <gasps> How what? dare you? And How? I'm, a- I'm upset already, Paul. <laughs> a little bit by our Discord community, too. Uh, we love you all on Discord, but for me, dude, Senua Saga, uh, uh, Hellblade <gasps> 2, man. This game has five minutes of fun. <laughs> spread out over like this eight hour game dude i know we said it on the deep dive i found the puzzles to be so insulting that you can't even call them puzzles it's just yeah they weren't puzzles pl- place this orb and it flips the room and then you walk forward uh there were so many issues i had with the game I, some of the graphics were great and the voice acting was great i'll give them credit for that and it had a couple really high moments but it's a lot of slowly walking there were a lot of times that I didn't know, am I supposed to press a button or am I watching a cutscene? Like, I think we all talked about like in the one scene where uh, Senua was like crawling up the mountain at one point and I was just staring at my monitor. Like, and I, all of a sudden I realized, oh, I have to press forward. I just found the game to be like super boring for the most part. I, I, I got to give it to Hellblade 2. <sighs> Sorry, Josh. I, it's, I, un- I will say I understand it, dude. Like, I joke around, but I get that that game is not everybody's cup of tea. It's funny because I can look at it as a whole and go, yeah, this probably disappointed a lot of people. I almost, I'll I'll say this since it's not my most memorable moment of the year, because that's a category that we're going to go to next after this one. But that, that scene in Hellblade 2, when you are creeping around the fire, uh, like seance Mm -hmm. ceremony thing. Dude, that is one of the most memorable scenes I've seen in a video game. That thirty like, seconds was incredible. I, I, but it, but that thirty seconds still stands out in my brain. So it's one of those things. So, but I, I, that's fair, Paul. I get it. You know. Um. All right, Ryan. Actually, I'm going to jump in on this one. Buckle up, people. Put your put your pitchforks away. I am going to rock the world on this one. I've tried, guys. I have tried twice now to pick up this game and play this game. I picked it up when it released and I literally picked it up last week and I have refunded it both (laughs) times. It's not even an expensive game, man. It's not like I need to refund it, but I just can't get into it. And the world has lost their minds over this game. I apologize up front because I know this game has a cult following. 
The most overrated game for this year is Bellatro. Paul's mouthing it. Yeah, I was it, mouthing it. And I, I, <laughs> dude, I don't get it. I love, I love roguelike card games, man. I probably have 15 of them in my Steam library right now. I play at least a few of them every single year. This is absolutely like my peak genre of games. Bellatro comes out. It's just poker, man. It's it's just it's poker with the world's most annoying soundtrack. You get some modifiers. I get that there's like this super in-depth like strategy and math and all this stuff. I watched, I think it was uh Alex. Yeah. Play this game Streaming for like it. an hour mm-hmm. one night. And I'm like, he's getting into this deep, deep strategy. And like, if I can just get this modifier, dude, I can make it to like the infinite level and all that. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I, I, I don't even know what Bellatro is on Steam. I think it's like a 97%. It's ridiculously high. The world loves Bellatro. It's up for game of the year. That's insane. Like, that is insane yeah, to that's, me. That's crazy. I don't like this game. I have Dude, tried. <laughs> it's a 98% positive yes. rating on Steam. What? What? It's poker, people. The game already exists. It's existed for decades, maybe centuries. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was Ace Ace Theist in our uh, Discord was talking about how if if I want to play poker, I'll just play poker. Like I don't even play this card game. I'm not big on these types of card games. I'm the same way. If I'm gonna play poker, I'll just play real poker for real money, even if it's online. I'd much much rather do that than playing a game. I, I really, I want to like it. I feel like there's something wrong with me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, I look in the mirror sometimes. I'll be taking a shower and I go, Josh, what's wrong with you? Why don't you like Bellatro? <laughs> and I, I'm like, I don't know, but I don't like it. I think that game sucks. I've tried it twice now and I can't get into it, man. I'm sorry, everybody, but it's the most <laughs> overrated game of 2024. Nice. I like it. It's a good take. I I, I will say it is definitely overrated. I would not say it's bad. I like the game. I think it's quite good, but game of the year, I was very shocked when I saw that. I would expect that more from Animal Well as opposed to Bellatro. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Don't don't lynch me. I'm sorry. I apologize. All right, Ryan, what do you got? What's your uh, most overrated game? I'm going to go with the game that was not in contention for game of the year or is not in contention for game of the year. Rightfully so. In my opinion, um, this one just fell so flat for me. I expected a lot. It just did not deliver. And it's a little game called dragon's dogma. Yeah. It's an 86 right now. Uh, it it should be a 65. (laughs) Oh man. Everything Get I this wanted man. out of it, it didn't give what it a, to me. What a bad take. <laughs> everything, everything I wanted, and I was so excited, it just didn't give it to me. So it's it's overrated. Uh, it's like Chipotle. It's fine. It's serviceable. It's okay. But way too many are hyped up for something just mediocre. I'm... I'm actually with you, Ryan. Now, and and I I have said this multiple times. It's not a bad video game. I am not. We're. I'm not saying that this game is bad, but what we were hoping it was going to be and what it wound up being are two very different things. And I, I, I'm with you. I, I you know I, I I do think it's kind of overrated. I saw so much hype on social media from people that were like, "Dragon the Dogma Two is like the greatest game." I haven't had this much fun in combat in a world and in 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 forever. And then I'm kind of like, I mean, it's it's a good game, but it's not like an epic game. To play devil's so. advocate, I I played this way more than you guys did. I was very frustrated in the beginning. I will say the more I played it, the more I appreciated it. And I think the game does morph into what I was hoping it would be. It just doesn't start there. So once you add the additional waypoints and you unlock more of the classes and you get to see how more of the quests end, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I know that you guys weren't able to to get past that hurdle and and you guys especially hated the fast travel system and the save system and all that. I didn't like it in the beginning, but I, I, I grew to like it. I actually have dragon's dogma two third on my list for best game of the year. I, really? yeah. And the, the more time goes okay. on, the more fondly I remember the game. 
Quando os bebês sofrem de cólicas, dá até vontade de pedir pro Papai Noel pra acabar com elas, né? Com Lofital Infantil, as cólicas não precisam mais ser um problema. Com um alívio rápido e eficaz contra as cólicas dos gases, ele age em 10 minutos e é seguro para o seu bebê e não tem corante. Por isso, é o mais recomendado por pediatras. Disponível em todas as farmácias do Brasil. Acesse lofital.com.br e saiba mais. Lufthal sem meticona. Indicados para pacientes com excesso de gases no aparelho digestivo. Se persistirem os sintomas, o médico deverá ser consultado. Dezembro de 2024. It's, it's, I get it though. This is like, this is why that game is kind of polarizing because it's like, I'm in the middle saying like, I think it's a perfectly fine video game. It, I didn't find it exceptional, but I didn't find it bad. I just was a little disappointed. And that's my own hype level for like going into that game. Cause I mean, this is a game that I bid an awful lot of money on in our game auction to, cause I thought it was going to be the next Witcher. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not that Ryan. <laughs> yeah, it's not. And then Ryan, I feel like is even lower than me on this. And then Paul is higher. And it's like, I get all three viewpoints on that game. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good one, Ryan. I, I, I see both sides to be honest with you. So All right, um, let's swing back the other direction. Guys, we've only got a couple categories left here. Let's go with the best game that you played this year. Mm. So, And I know people are going to say, well, wait, how is this different than your personal favorite game of the year? This is just the, you know, the, the best game that you have played this year. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite. It's just the best overall. Now, you know, the total package of a game that you have played this year. It doesn't mean it necessarily had to release this year either. So you do kind of have a little bit of leeway there. Um, but that's kind of the difference as far as like what your personal favorite was versus what is the best game that you played this year? I love this category because it's fun. You get to talk about something from another year. Um, there's always games like in the backlog that you don't get to play. Yeah. And sometimes this is like a great category for that. I know last year I gave this to Uncharted 2, Ryan gave it to Red Dead 2, Josh, you gave it to Baldur's Gate 3. Um, now, you guys might remember for our Force a Friend format that I made Ryan play Heavy Rain, and yep. then very shortly after I left, Ryan made a comment on the show about what he would have picked for me if I was still on the pod. And do you remember? Did you play it? Oh, I played it, buddy. Was this Ghost of Tsushima? Ghost of Tsushima. <gasps> yes! You played yes! it! Yeah! It is so freaking good. <laughs> oh, I told you. you oh, my God. You played Ghost of Tsushima and you didn't tell us? You've been holding out on us I've been for all out. this time? You little snake. <laughs> now, oh, my goodness. Now, let me tell you, the worst play, the worst way to play Dragon Age The Fail Guard is when you have to stop at the end of Act 2 in Ghost of Tsushima and go load up Dragon Age, and let me tell you, it was so hard for me to play <laughs> Dragon Age. That's the worst way to do it. Ghost of Tsushima, I knew it was going to be amazing. I knew. Same as The Witcher. Like, I didn't play The Witcher 3 until five years later. Yeah! I'm so, I'm right so jacked up! Yeah, it's so good. I will say, it plays like a 10-year-old game. There are a lot of elements in there where it plays exactly like Dragon Age Inquisition. It's like, okay, here's the new zone. Up, oh, here's the hub. I talk to them. They unlock all these points on my map. Here's all the things I can clear. But man, if that game doesn't nail the culture of the world, all the side quests, the side quests to me were better than the main story. They really made that game feel alive. And I loved every second of it. The combat's fun. I mean, I, it's it's not the most I was challenging about the combat. combat. That was my question, though, because you initially said you're generally not a fan of melee combat. And there's a, I mean, you obviously you get the bow and you can do archery in that. Mm -hmm. But I, so you you enjoy the combat in it? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Great yes. game. And I yes. I really loved the, the chain assassinations. <laughs> yeah. See, I I pumped all these points into where I would yell for the standoffs. Like, I don't know if you guys do that. Every time I walked up to a stronghold, I'm not sneaking my way in. I'm just shouting from the rooftops, come meet me, you cowards. And then, you know, I'd have my hand on my sword and then whoosh, you'd you know kill the first guy. Here comes the second. I'd kill him. Here comes the third guy. I'd kill him. Oh, it, it was a blast. It's a fantastic game. And I'm not shocked. I knew I was going to love it. I just I finally got around to it. I can't believe you kept that from us this whole time, Paul. I have been logged out of Steam for like three months <laughs> or however long. I don't know how long ago I left the show. Time time oh, makes no man. sense to me anymore these days. But whenever that was, I have not been online in Steam since then because I was hoping you guys wouldn't see that I was playing. Oh, I, my goodness. I, I don't even know what to say right now. I don't either. Um, so Josh has what I was going to give to you. 
I had like 3D printed this mask, this Japanese like samurai mask. I I, I primed it. I painted it. Um, I did all these uh, effects on it and and gold teeth. And I was gonna <laughs> give it to you in like a package. Like, oh, this is the game I'm picking. <laughs> there it is. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. No, man, I have an extra one. I uh, I'll I'll paint it and I'll give it to you. But that's how I was gonna present the game to you. I was gonna kind of hand it to you and like here you here you go this is what you're gonna have to play so i was bummed out when you left but oh man i i'm so glad you were able to experience that it's also so he gave me the mask so I'll, you're not getting the mask paul <laughs> that's fine it's on my shelf so. i have more than one i printed like yeah. five so we'll be I was good. you had to take your headset off there josh but yeah ryan ryan's got another one but yeah what oh, a fantastic that game is awesome it would have been a fun deep dive so happy oh absolutely <laughs> I, I don't even know what we were talking about i'm, <laughs> I'm just so excited best game right now. that you've played this year i'll jump in on this one I, I i have to give it its due because there was controversy around this game shadow of the Erd tree is the best game that i have played this year i absolutely love elden ring it's one of my top five games um honestly there is no other video game in the world like elden ring to me um, and Shadow of the Erd Tree gave me more of exactly what I wanted, which was more Elden Ring, more boss fights, more world to explore, more secrets than you could shake a stick at. It was just absolute perfection of what I wanted a DLC or expansion to, to Elden Ring to be. And I know that people said, oh, well, it shouldn't qualify as a, as a game of the year and that stuff. So I'm giving it its due right here for the best game that I played this year. I absolutely lost myself in that game. I beat the final boss. Um, so I actually completed all the content. I'm kind of proud of myself there. Uh, not only is it an achievement, but also I beat a game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I finished one. That's very um, rare. So I'll just leave it at that. Shadow of the Earth Tree. Oh, my goodness. It was everything I wanted it to be. All right, Ryan, what about you? What is the best game that you played this year? So this one should not come as a surprise to anyone who's listened to me on the Discord or anywhere else. For Liberty. What? Oh, For Liberty. No, no you're no? wrong. You're usually no. right, Paul. But in this one, you're wrong. I'm going with Diablo 2 Resurrected. Oh, I should have known. I had just... I just got completely absorbed back into the world of Diablo 2. Um, it, it does have that bit of nostalgia factor for me. Obviously, that's a huge part of it, but it is just one of those kind of perfect games that the difficulty on some of the enemies, if you're doing things a certain way, is, is really tough. The builds are awesome. Searching for gear is awesome. Finding, you know, those those certain drops and those loots. Um, it just there's there's something about it that really clicks with me that I don't mind doing the grind. I don't mind running bail runs. I don't mind running, uh, you know, Mephisto or, or any of these just kind of grindy things that, that a lot of other games just make you feel like meh and you don't want to do it. It's a chore to this. It seems fun for whatever reason. It always just resonates back with me. So it's just, there's, there's nothing like it to me and it's just always right on the top. There's this game that just came out, Ryan, that you should be super uh, dude, hyped for. It's called dude, Path of Exile 2. I Ever heard of it? Uh, this is this is Ever this heard is, of it? Okay, listen. <laughs> this is I know. This is I how know. I know Ryan is so in love with Diablo <laughs> that it's like he won't even try Path of Exile 2. <laughs> you and it's peasants. like a million people peasants, have picked I up. Say. Actually, it's way more than a million at this point. People are loving it. It's a lot of the conversation on our Discord server, and everybody's like, whoa, Path of Exile 2. And Ryan is just like, nah. I'll nah. just play this 20 year old game. Yeah, I'll just play this game that's 20 years old because I love it. They're like grandparents, Ryan. You can love them both equally. Loving a second one doesn't take anything away from the first. Uh, you would love <laughs> Path of Exile, too. I am so convinced. I'm uh, sure uh, I'd like it. I'll, I'm sure I'll check it out right when. Josh yeah, right quits. when I quit playing it, Ryan yeah. will be like, hey, dude, I'm ready to play Path of Exile, too. And I'll be like, <laughs> I'm done with that, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we've got one more category until we get to the best game of the year. That is most memorable moment of 2024. Now, we we have generally we tend to think of like a game moment, but we have also said it could be a podcast moment, something that happened either during the show or while we were playing a game together or something like that. 
I'll start this one off. I actually, Paul, I did consider that Hell, uh, the um, Hellblade 2 scene uh, as mm. one of that because it was very memorable for this one. But I am going with Paul sneakily playing Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> without telling us. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> as, as great as that was, um, I'm going to go with the first time dropping into Helldivers 2 together. This is what I put. Is it really? It, it really it's, I put three-way tie the first day of playing Helldivers, and I have three different moments, but I want to hear you talk first. I, I actually, It's funny because I actually have three different moments. Oh my goodness, this, <laughs> this is too two. funny. So the first time dropping into Helldivers 2 together, our excitement was through the roof. We land from our pods. I turn around. I instantly shoot Paul. Yep. I mean, within a half a second, Paul is just dead. We all crack up. It was hilarious. And then Paul tries to smush me with his drop pod on the way back down, <laughs> which was hilarious as well. I mean, that one, I still just chuckle thinking about that one. Um, the Seeing a Bile Titan for the first time mm. in Helldivers 2 was another one of like the, oh my goodness, what are we supposed to do against that thing? And then the other one for me was the first time that you see the automatons because you got so used to fighting the Terminans and then you go to this automaton planet and all of a sudden these things just these Terminator robot things come out and they're shooting at you and you're like, they're shooting at us. And you're like, what do we do now? <laughs> so Helldivers 2 just had so many memorable moments. The, the, the main one for me is just the dropping together and then just instantly turning around and killing Paul. I, I put that moment. I wrote down the first time we landed. The second one, if you remember, it was the first time I ever picked up an explosive barrel. And do you remember what oh. you did, Josh? You immediately <laughs> turned it. and shot it, but it didn't explode right away. It was like um, it was like shooting out sparks, and it was yeah. lit on fire. And I immediately knew, like, throw this barrel or it's going to explode. And it just cracked me up because I never it would have never crossed my mind to shoot that barrel while someone's <laughs> holding it. And then the last one was how much we all loved the dive mechanic. And oh, yeah. the second time we opened the nuclear silo, I dove straight in and I just thought it was the funniest thing I had ever done. And of course I died, but uh, man, that first day of hell divers, just goofing around where you had just as much fun losing a mission as you did winning. And really that's did. when you knew the game had something special. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's true. It's such but, a good but point. my mortars were the problem. The mortars you guys were, were the just problem. shooting we're the and problem. killing each <laughs> other, you know, but that, my mortars were the problem. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so funny, Paul. Yeah. That is awesome, man. Too funny. That's what a about, good one. What about you, Ryan? Tell us what what uh what your favorite moment is that doesn't involve us. Uh you know. Well, it kind of kind of involves us. It it involves uh what we did, I guess you would say. Ooh. Um Got a little hyper focused in, on this situation. My one tracked mind uh, took me over for a day or two, but I'm gonna go with when we went viral for our Pal World video. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was so much fun, man. Yeah. So it's at like 1.7 million views, um, which is crazy. There, there was a a wild reaction to it. There was reaction videos where people were reacting actually to our video, which is always crazy to see um, when it's your own. And then uh, shout out to Ace for recording it. But it was it was one of those things where I, I was yelling at my wife like, honey, honey, it's at 800,000. Oh, we just hit 950. <laughs> and it just kept going, going. Yeah, with the devs retweeting us, I was just like, we we made it. We did it. It really was, man. I, it, it, you know, everybody talks about wanting to go viral, and then it's like it actually happened. And it is, it is just a wild ride. It, like it was for for a yeah. day or two. It, yeah, I mean, you know, it's and we like didn't get fame out of it. it. We're but. not like the hawk to a girl or anything no, like that. No. You know what I mean? But it's like so. But it was just, it really was a very memorable moment. It was a wild ride. I was exactly like you, Ryan, where. You know, it was refreshing every couple minutes and then shouting to my wife, look, baby, look, we broke a million, you know, and she's like, well, what does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know, probably nothing, but nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing ultimately, nothing but it was fun, all, but it yeah. was cool. <laughs> yeah. And kudos to Paul, because it really was Paul's idea that, that, I mean, he's the one that said, what if we just put a whole bunch of campfires down yeah. and, and then drag him over that too. So and it actually worked. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, boys. Are you ready for the official game of the year 
Now, this is we've covered our personal favorite game of the year. We have covered the best game that we've played this year. This is the game that we think deserves to be the 2024 game of the year. You know, put it all together, gameplay, you know, presentation, story, whatever. You know, this is the game that you think is actually the most deserving of the game of the year. Paul, let's start with you on this one. Sure. For me, this was very obvious. It is a game that a deep dive was done on this show. And this is a game that just hit on every cylinder for me. I know you guys did not like it as much. I was so glad to see the Golden Joystick Awards give best game of the year to Black Myth Wukong because that game 100% deserves it, in my opinion. I know it did not click quite the same with you guys, but man, just the, the graphics I still think are the best I've seen the entire year. Space Marine 2 looks fantastic, uh, but for me, I don't know. It's just something about the different biomes and especially like the plants and, and all the, the ambient stuff in Black Myth Wukong just looks so good. I loved the secret areas, the little secret items you could make that would help you defeat the final boss in each chapter. I mean, everything about this game I thought was so well done. I still can't believe that, that Josh, you in particular, um, felt like it was too many bosses. Because to me, that was the best part of the game. You had to learn these new fights constantly, but probably half of them you would beat the first or second time. So to me, yeah. it was really fun where you were constantly learning and discovering, and then you would hit the hard bosses. The Scorpion Lord, I honestly, I stopped counting. I probably had to fight him a hundred times until I finally beat him. So there were really hard fights in that game too, but to me... It just, uh, the graphics, the sound, the story, the gameplay, the difficulty, the innovation, all the different bosses. To me, it's Black Myth Wukong. I, I gave it a 9.7 on our deep dive, so it probably shouldn't be all that surprising. It is, it is for a studio, because this was their first game. Too. Insane. I, I mean, for them to come out and do what they did with that game and how good it was is is super impressive. Now it's funny because I looked at all of my games that we've talked about so far and Black Myth Wukong is not on there. Yeah. And there's a part of me that kind of went, "Why, dude? Like why did you not like this game more?" And I think it to, for the record, I think it's a fantastic video game. Part of my problem is there is some almost and I think I, I'm pretty sure I said this during our deep dive on it that there's some like almost un intangible thing that I can't quite put my finger on that holds me back just a little bit. And it's weird because even now, like comparing Black Myth Wukong with Shadow of the Erd Tree, which I just mentioned, Shadow of the Erd Tree is like, it's so far beyond Black Myth Wukong to me. And I don't know why. You know what I mean? Like it, it sometimes it's like, I can't, there, there's a lot of people that would make the argument that they're the same game. You know, they're Dark Souls, it's combat, it's boss fights, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, the presentation of Black Myth Wukong is second to none. Like, I am with you 100%. I, I wish I knew what it was that, like, held me back from thinking that this is, like, one of the great games of all time for that. But I just don't quite know what it is, man. Three years of really yeah. high expectations, maybe? Maybe, but I mean, I had high expectations for Elden Ring and then Shadow of the Earth Tree when they announced that, and I didn't feel let down by those at all either, you know? And that's not to say that Black Myth Wukong let me down either. Like, I, I it, you know, it, it's one of those, I really enjoyed my time with it. It just, for some reason, it didn't have that, like, magic to me. It was very enjoyable. It was very fun. It just was missing like a spice or a flavor where my brain kind of went like, shouldn't it have this? And I wish I could tell you what it was, but it just, it, 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 and again, that's not to slander the game at all, but I, it's just, it, I think it's why for me, it, it's not a nomination for me for some reason. So it's like tears of the kingdom all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe like, honestly, I don't know, but, but I, but the, okay. So to be fair, it also makes me wonder, Paul, because you don't like 
like fighting a boss a hundred times. No, I don't. Like you've always said that you don't like melee combat. You don't like slamming your head against a wall against a boss like over and over and over again. And so it makes me wonder if the, if this like weird, like mystical thing that I can't put my finger on, I feel like is missing. Is that the same thing that made it resonate even more with you? Just a personal preference thing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said the ideal number of boss attempts is seven to eight. That to me is perfect. When you start getting into the 20 plus, I just get mad and it stops being fun and enjoyable. And to me, Elden Ring is just too much dying. And I find it frustrating where Black Myth Wukong I found to be pitch perfect in that regard. So just uh, different strokes, I guess. It was it was a good game. I just don't think for Josh, it had um, uh, Elden Ring on the box. I don't know, man. I wanted it. I wanted it to be Elden Ring, but with like Asian mythology and it kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. All right, Ryan, I have a feeling I know what your your choice for this one is, but best game of the year for you. Diablo 2. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so this one is going to be one that talk about hitting on all cylinders. Um graphics, gameplay, level design, uh, audio, e- everything you can imagine and want within a game, um, just even performance-wise. like It was just so crisp, no issues ever. I'm going with Astro Bot. It is, it is next level. Um, it is something that I have probably never experienced in gaming and also in a platformer. I have all 312 bots. I got all the puzzle pieces. I have maybe four or five little trophies to go to platy the whole game. I do not platy games. It's not something I do. I'm not a trophy hunter. It's not something that I uh, aspire to be or strive to be. But I just can not put this game down. I am wholeheartedly addicted. I absolutely love it. It is one of the best games as well as platformers I've ever played. Um, and it's just by far absolutely amazing and i'm obsessed the one one issue that there is with this game is because of how amazing it is all the effects uh with rumble and sound on your controller is that that bad boy is toast within like an hour your (laughs) your batteries are not (laughs) lasting very long at all or your recharge you got to have it plugged in while you play because it just nukes the controller battery. I had it number two, and I will say I sometimes catch myself singing the Astrobot song yeah. all the time. Dun, it's dun, so good. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun, 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 Oh, and then all the nostalgia, too. You get all of these franchise like Sony platform characters over all of these years. They got Helldivers. They got uh, Final Fantasy. They have uh, Crash Bandicoot. They have everything over decades worth of gaming to just hit on everybody that's played, you know, a PlayStation over all the years. And it's just, it's so awesome. So my best game of the year is also Astrobot. It really is. And I, I, you know, I thought about Helldivers 2 here, but I, you know, this is the game that we think is most deserving of game of the year. And Ryan, you said basically everything there is to say. It is a perfect video game, in my opinion. It made me feel like a kid again. It made me, it gave me that feeling of like playing the old school Nintendo as a child and trying to make it through a level or the discovery of a level, you know, or just the cool little things that you saw. So it gave me that that feeling again. And I haven't had that feeling in a really long time. There was never a moment where I felt like the game was dragging, you know, where I was kind of like, Oh, I wish they just kind of progress this or something like that. It rewarded you for everything. It rewarded you for being mechanically sound for exploring, for paying attention to things. The presentation was second to none. I, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's literally like a perfect video game, in my opinion. I cannot think of another game in recent memory that made me feel like a kid again. And Astrobot made me feel like a kid, like playing a console game. I couldn't wait to get home from work. I, I mean, literally, I'd get home, I'd kiss my wife, and I'm, I'm going to go play Astrobot, you know. And while I was at work, I was thinking about playing Astrobot and stuff like that. It just, there's very few games like it. There's very few game releases that come out and do what Astrobot has done. 
Uh, and so I'm with you. I think it is absolutely the game of the year for 2024. Yeah, and you only had like two or three weeks with it with uh, my PlayStation. I ground through it. I will say that the one the one downside is like I would I'd like to do what you're doing, where I could just literally like take my time and and really go through it. I I ground through this game. Not that I minded that because it's incredible, but it is it's an it's a phenomenal video game, like in all aspects. I know we have to shut down shop, but um. Kind of a wild question. Do you think it's the best platformer ever? Yes. I, do. I think so too. I legitimately yeah, it's sure. better than I, I like Mario 64. I think it's better than Celeste. I think it's better than Mario 3. And those are all such good games. And I think Astrobot's better than all of them. Just alone from the gameplay and innovation on the levels, like the design of them and 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 the abilities. Like you you have your, your mouse ability, where you shrink down to the size of a mouse, you can go through these areas, you have to go small, go big, uh, you're not able to get through other spots unless you do either either, you know, and and then you have this the the vacuum ability with the, the elephant on your back where you can suck up water and you can turn it into ice sheets that you can go across or you suck up leaves and then you can use them as platforms. That's only two of all of the features within the game. That, that make it just stand out among all the other platformers. And it was just awesome. I, I like that they gave you the difficult levels as well. Because I remember playing the game and going like, man, this game's not super hard. Like, it's not challenge. And then they gave, you, they gave me exactly what I wanted. They said, dude, you want some hard levels where you're going to attempt these 30 times? Like, here you go. And so they just, I think they gave people exactly what they wanted. They covered everything, you know. And there wasn't, it wasn't a phenomenal game, but the graphics sucked. <laughs> you know, or the audio was terrible or something like that. So, all right, two Astrobots, one Black Myth Wukong for Game of the Year from the Video Gamers Podcast. Guys, 2024, what a year. I, I mean, you know, it, maybe we didn't get Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War this year, but we got a lot of solid video games. I'll say for the podcast, what a fantastic year. I mean, we saw huge growth with the podcast. We had a lot of very good things happen. We had Paul leaving the show, which was, you know, a very tough thing for both him and us, but it, you know, we have seen our community grow. We have seen this podcast grow. We've seen the support uh, from people just all over, um, people supporting Paul and his decision and supporting Ryan and I with keeping this going as well. It's really just been an incredible year. We are so thankful for the listeners and the community and all of you out there that share your days with us and share your commutes to work with us. Um, we are humbled by it. Like honestly, Ryan and I and, and Paul still talk about it, that it's like, we can't believe there's people out there that want to just tune in and listen to us talk video games and that you make us a part of your daily lives and stuff like that. Um, we've had people reach out, uh, privately had, I won't name names, but we had a very, very generous person reach out to us through the podcast and then make a donation to, uh, you know, Paul's business, uh, his faith and families charity that he does. Um, which was incredible to see. So thank you for that. You know who you are. And just everybody that has sent DMs to us and messages to just let us know what the podcast means to you and how that affects your days and stuff. It, you know, ditto. Like, honestly, it, it affects us as well. Um, I, you know, I'm constantly showing my wife, like, reviews that people leave and I go, baby, can you believe that people are saying this about us? <laughs> you know? And, and, and it's just, it's, it's heartwarming. It's humbling. And so thank you from all of us, um, for the support. It really does mean the world to us. So we hope you enjoyed this episode, Paul. It's good to have you back, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. I said at some point I'll make a jeopardy board. I'll come back and I'll yeah. let you guys play for points. We'll have daily doubles, all that this jazz. This is not It'll the be last fun. time you'll hear Paul. No, we can no, promise no. you that as well. So it's, uh, but it was really awesome to have you back for this one, Paul. So thank you for taking time. We know you got to go. So we're going to wrap this one up. Again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for an amazing 2024. We will be back in 2025 with our most anticipated games of 2025. And boy, let me tell you, there's a lot that I'm anticipating. <laughs> um, but until then, and until next time, happy gaming. Home Alone is the best Christmas movie ever. Ooh, I'm with you, Ryan. Happy holidays, everyone. We'll see you next year. See ya!